Well, hello there, friends. This is, without a doubt, the most celebrated, the most delicious, the most fantastic French steak of all time. That sauce is so good, you could rub it over your body. I promise you, it's that good. <laughs> Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. That steak is coming up right now, friends. It's amazing. Okay, friends, well, <laughs> this is not exaggerating. If there is one of the most popular steak, ask any French person, any European person, what is the most popular, the most celebrated, the most delicious steaks, it's the steak au poivre. I made a video, I think a couple of years ago, one of my first video, and, uh, and uh, we got a lot of views, I think about 3 million views, and, uh, but we had a lot of comments. Uh, so I'm gonna address I'm gonna address them all, okay, and and talk to you about it, and then we're gonna make it. Uh, we're gonna make that simple. It's really a simple sauce. I mean, um, uh, Bastille Day is the 14th of July, and if you want to make steak and you want to celebrate it, that's the easiest steak to do. I promise you, it's really French and it's really easy to make. All right, I'm starting with two New York shrimp. I remove most of the fat out. Some people like to leave it on. It's really a matter of opinion. There's no right or wrong when it comes to do that. You do it however you want it. A lot of people love all that fat around it. It's really up to you. I like myself to be able to cut through it and eat the whole thing. I don't like to cut around the fat. Matter of opinion, okay? We don't need the fat because we are gonna cook it in butter. Now, in the first video, I first thing I say, you can't cook a steak in butter because you're gonna burn it. The video was brand new, the channel was just, I was just coming in and I didn't wanna say, oh, you need to clarify your butter. I said, oh boy, this guy is starting good already. He wants us to use clarify, I don't have clarify butter, what do I use? What I should have just said, use a avocado oil or use a high smoke point oil anyway, that works fine. But I should have said also, you can use butter as long as it's clarified butter, all right, liquid gold. And we made video about this, there's plenty of video with that there, friends. I put just a little too much, I don't need that much right there. Um, there's a, a beautiful video on how to make clarified butter, there's a video on how to make ghee, and so uh, we, we, uh, we are comfortable with that. Everybody now can use it, and if, again, if you don't have it, you use a good uh, avocado oil or a high, good high smoke point oil. We have cracked black pepper, and I mean cracked black pepper, friends, and I have a, uh, uh, I'm gonna show you later on how to make the cracked black pepper, how I make it really, really easy. And now I'm gonna put any salt in there, friends, because the salt, um, uh, the salt was already added 24 hours ago. Jack is gonna give you a link, how to cook the perfect steak, another fantastic video than we did, and we put the salt 24 hours ago. If you have the time to do that, by all means do it, and make sure your steak is at, uh, is uh, in, on a rack like this, in the fridge, for at least 24 hours. And I'm telling you what, it creates a beautiful, amazing, beautiful crust, and uh, you'll never go back and do it any other way. I don't care what steak you're making, friends, it creates a beautiful dry crust. All right, I got my temperature, my oil, my uh, uh, clarified butter right there. It's at 400 degrees. Clarified butter has no problem up to 450, 480, depends what you're looking at. First of all, let me just clean up here, friends, really quick. All right? I forgot what I was going to say, but uh, we're in good shape. So we're going to leave it right there. We don't touch it. Don't touch it. it. Smells amazing. Don't touch it. I know you have a lot of people tell you, move your steak every so often, whatever. You know what? Do it however you want to do it, friends. I am a firm believer that to create the Maillard reaction, caramelization of the protein. It gives you a better crust if you don't touch it. You wanna play with it? You'll do it. I'd rather leave my steak alone and create a beautiful, beautiful crust, okay? Now we're gonna do the side real quick, and we're gonna flip it, and then we're gonna finish it in the oven. I got a preheated oven at 500 degrees. All right, very simple. So, while this is happening, I'm not gonna leave, I'm just gonna leave it alone right now. I am gonna show you how to make the peppercorn, friends, because you, it, how to make it like that where it's crushed. I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? It's very simple. I get a, um, uh, 
uh, uh, spice grinder like this, and I put my uh, whole peppercorn in there, right? And I just pulse it a few times. Really simple. I don't want to do it too much. Otherwise, it's too, it's too little, it's too. So what happened here, you're not gonna get them all perfect. You're gonna get some that are, are too crushed <coughs> and some that are not crushed enough. So what I do is do this, see look. Now this right there, I use this as my ground black pepper. And this right there, friends, I use it as, as my cracked black pepper. You may do it a little bit more like that, but you got the idea, all right, friends? So I'll do this later on a little bit more, okay? All right, very simple. And you do this and you make it in advance because you can't really buy what we call uh, a crushed black pepper. It's fine or, or, or whole. Right, so look, look, guys. We're going to go in there and we'll leave them down in a second. It, has, it looks beautiful. While they're doing their thing, I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a really quick little simple vegetables, friends. I'm going to make some zucchini, zucchini julienne. In the original recipe, I did the green beans, which I love. Uh, I'm going to make zucchini julienne. Very simple. Look, I take some thick slices of zucchini and I take them and I cut them in, in julienne. And I got them right there. You see? Julienne of zucchini. Just a really quick vegetable. Nothing to it, friends. So I'm going to show you how to cut those. Let me check the steaks to make sure they're okay. To make sure they're doing well. We got a nice crust, but not quite. Let me see how we're doing. Yes, yes, we're doing good, we're doing good. We're gonna do the side real quick. Yeah, we're doing good, we got a nice side. Yes, 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 we're doing good. We're gonna do the side and we're gonna flip the other one. Just enough so we have a little color on the side. Don't wanna cook it up too much on the side. All I need is a little color. They're beautiful. That's it, just a little bit. And then friends, remember it's all about the sauce. This is all about the sauce, friends. All right, just a little bit on the side. And now friends, we're gonna flip it on the other side. And now we're gonna go, here, oh, let me do just a little more on that side right there. I got just a little bit right there. And now friends, we're gonna go in the oven, preheated 500 degrees. Really simple. And now be careful, you better put your timers on, friends, because now at this point, five, six minutes, depends how thick they are, okay? I got zucchini and I got potatoes. The potatoes, friends, I got those little tuna potatoes. Very simple, I wanted to show you how to do them. It's very simple. You buy potato about decent size, you got quite a bit of waste when you do them. But if you wanna make them kind of pretty, it's really simple. You peel them and you cut them in sides, you see? You cut them in sides, so you waste quite a bit of it, but they look pretty. They look a little more elegant than just a, a, a plain potato like that. Take your time, and you make what we call a tournée potatoes, and you go in a little bit more, and you take your time to do it nice, all right? So then you take your potatoes, right there, you, and you poach it in water, so it's cooked. Okay, you take them and you poach them in boiling water until they're totally fork tender, and at the last minute, all you have to do is just saute them. We saute them in a little butter. <laughs> really simple, friends, okay? Anytime we put butter, you know it's gonna be delicious. So butter, butter here. Now, we're not afraid to burn the butter here because we're not gonna go in the oven, we're not gonna be cooking anything at a high temperature. So I'm gonna saute this, I'm gonna get them golden brown, and in the zucchini, with the zucchini, I'm gonna put a little bit of sun-dried tomatoes and a little bit of garlic and a little bit of shallots. Okay, so we're gonna make the zucchini kind of fun. The potatoes right there, we're gonna saute them until they're golden brown. All right, friends. So, I don't wanna make the video too long because we still gotta make a nice sauce. So we're gonna wait for this to get hot. We're gonna start sauteing the vegetables and we'll come back, we'll finish the sauce together and the steak together, okay? Okay, friends, five minutes, six minutes, depends how thick they are. We're just gonna take them down, friends, and we're gonna let them rest for a few minutes. Let me just put this over here so I can use my plate to let them rest. And then I'm gonna need two dinner plates.
that I had forgotten to put in. I am going to take them now and let them rest for now. That's what I'm going to do. Just going to let them rest. So now, friends, it's all about the sauce. Remember, friends, you're taking a fry pan out of the oven, and it's very important now that you leave a towel on that pan because that pan is ready. The, uh, uh, the vegetables are ready. What do we do now? Now it's the sauce. It's the most important part of making a steak au poivre is the sauce. So I still got a little bit of clarified butter in the bottom of the pan, and, uh, and um, uh, I don't mind at all because it's clarified butter. It's going to help with the sauce. Uh, if you put oil, you may want to remove a little bit of it. Uh, just make sure you got the font in here. So now we're going to put a little cognac. Now be careful with the cognac, friends, because it's going to flambe. So I highly recommend it. Then you do it uh, where it's safe. You see right there, if you stay next to a flame here, friends, this is what's going to happen. So be careful. There you go. You got a beautiful flambe. I do it... Uh, uh, away from the camera, but this is going to be a perfect, perfect deglazing way to deglaze my pan. I know you guys are not seeing the pan now because I can't put it in front of the cameras because if I do, um, if I put it in front of the camera, we're going to have some melt lenses. So here we go. That's it. We're done. All right. So now be very careful. Now we're going to let that deglaze just a little bit. Uh, we still got a little flame in there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't want the camera out the flambe, friends. There's actually two of them out there. So here we go. All right. Stop now. Very good. You got to talk to it. Now we're going to put a little bit of our stock here, friends. We're going to let that reduce. And I got my beautiful beef stock. For those of you that have been following the channel, you have these two, two links out there, friends, for you to make beef stock. The traditional and the souped up one. Okay. And we're going to put a little bit of beef stock. But remember, this recipe, friends, is all about the sauce. We gotta let that sauce reduce right there. Okay, we're gonna let it reduce, reduce, reduce. Let's reduce, reduce, reduce. It's very important. We want that sauce to be uh, reduced so it's too much in here. There's too much liquid, you see, friends? And we wanna make sure that we get all of the bottom. And the best way to do this is to grab yourself a little whisk. And oh, by the way, you can use a cast iron pan, uh, but I tell you what, I like better stainless steel pan for this. And you got yourself a good stainless steel pan, a heavy pan. You buy a good quality one, you'll have it for a lifetime, my friends. Lifetime. Peppercorn. All right, so we got the black peppercorn in the sauce. We can add a few more if we want to, but we're going to put the green peppercorn. The green peppercorn, they come in in a can like this. You see, look, friends. They come in in a can, green peppercorn, and they are in a brine. What I like to do is I like to remove the brine, put them in a little typoware container, and replace the brine with cognac. And they last forever in the fridge, in the cognac. They last forever. You don't want to put the green peppercorn, don't worry about it. Not like, oh, your steak of poivre is not going to be any good because you didn't put the peppercorn. You see, look, well reduced. Now we're going to put some heavy cream. You gotta have heavy cream for steak of water. You just gotta have heavy cream. See heavy cream right here? Just a little bit. You don't need a lot. You'll see it. Look how beautiful that looks. Look how beautiful that looks. Look how beautiful that looks, friends. This you can take a picture. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Look at this. This is a steak of water, friends. Look how beautiful. We're gonna let that reduce a little bit. Let it reduce a little bit more. Then we're gonna turn the heat off. And then, let me put all that here. And then, friends, we're going to put the sauce on top of it with butter. <laughs> okay, uh, let me finish the plate. And uh, the plate, very simple, eh? We just have the a zucchini. You can do the green beans. You can do the zucchini. This is not a fancy dish, friends. It's very simple. Uh, the green beans are very, very easy to make. Very easy to make the green beans, but you can make the zucchini, whatever makes you happy, friends. All right? And then, the sauce, now turn the heat off. Turn the heat off. When you're ready to put whole butter, remember now, the reason why we use clarified butter at the beginning is because butter has milk. Milk protein will burn at 250 degrees, so we don't want burned butter. 
Okay, so I, I know a lot of you have heard me say that before, but I just want to make sure I don't forget to say it. All right, now look, guys. <laughs> bottle. <laughs> yes, yes. Now you take your bottle right there. Make sure, make sure the heat is off. Make sure the heat is off, friends. Because this is all about the bottle. That sauce is all about the bottle. All about the pepper, all about the cognac. And look, look how beautiful that sauce is. Look at this, friends. Look at this. Look at the mess I'm making, but it's very it's beautiful. All right, mix it in. The minute you put your butter in, you got to mix it in. And scrape the pan, scrape the pan. It smells amazing. It smells amazing. Put a touch more salt, because we had salt in the steak, but we did not have salt in the sauce. So I'm going to do a quick test. Look at this. Look how beautiful that looks, friends. Let me test it really quick. <laughs> Oh, it's sweet. It's delicious. All right, let's take a steak and put it right on the plate. Very simple here. Very simple. Now, if you got some little juice in there, they go in the sauce. Yeah, you don't waste any of that, my friends. And then let's take another spoon. Actually, you know what? I can take one of those spoons right there. Look at this, friends. Let me tell you something, friends. Oh, another thing last time I didn't do in the first video. I didn't cut into the steak. <sighs> and believe me, this time I'm going to cut into it. Look at this, friends. Look at that sauce. Look at this, friends. Look at this. Don't be afraid now. You can give them a little gooseneck and more sauce on the side. Let's put a couple of potatoes in there, right? Couple of potato on the plate. Very simple. See, they got a nice little golden color. Yeah. Right there. You can put more, you can put less, whatever makes you happy. That's it, that's it. I'm not gonna do anything else with the plate, friends. The only thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut into it because I didn't do that the last time. I was new on the channel. I didn't do that, but this time, <laughs> you can bet it I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right, uh, Right there, Jack. What do you think? Is that good right there? Or you want it right there? Where do you want it? You got to tell me where you want it. Where do you want me to cut it from? Let me get a fork. Right there? Where do I go? Right there? Okay, you just tell me every, every time good. So I go every time good. All right, here we go, friends. Oh, yeah, it cuts like butter. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at this, my friends. Look at this. Look, it cuts like butter. I don't even have to cut it. Look at this. It's medium rare, rare. That's the way I love it. And it's gorgeous. And oh. Oh. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. <laughs> My friend. Mmm. I took too big of a piece. But I always do that. Mmm. You go ahead and do this, my friends. You're gonna love it, I promise you. It's gorgeous, it's delicious. I hope you make it. If you're gonna celebrate Bastille Day, there's no better day, no better steak to do it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching, friends. Wow. Mm, this is even better than the first time I made it. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I should do this more often. Let me tell you, this is like, it's like butter. I mean, that steak tastes like butter. I mean, look at this. It cuts like butter. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I'm telling you, I gotta go in the pan. Ah. <laughs> oh, wow. No, take a photo before I eat it all. Uh -huh.